back to the Iron Runescape speedrun Moral Percent. The old school Runescape speedrun where I get a max cape on an Iron account morally and quickly. No trading, no alt accounts, no boosting, leeching, or getting help from another account unless it's absolutely necessary to complete the content. Last episode, we finally started the farming grind, working our way up to hard contracts and better herb yields, and ended by running around everyone's favorite minigame, Tithe Farm. Luckily, the 24 plus 1 method is pretty quick, so I got my points and got out of there, and went right back to the classic hourlies and quest grind. People still like to say Ratcatchers is the worst quest, but that's kind of old news, they've fixed that quest, it's fine. But have you seen Tower of Life? Jagex, come on. Look, look how long it's taking me to search these crates. What random intern in 2007 thought it should take 5 full seconds to search a crate? You have to do it like 30 times and you can fail. I feel like we should be writing in Fowler about this. Anyway, after finishing my new favorite thing to complain about, I went off to do the Temple of Icoff. Now fun fact, if you don't already know, you don't actually need 40 range to do Temple of Icoff, even though it says you do in the game. You just need a single ice arrow in your quiver and a thrown weapon. It's great, this game is way too easy. So then I killed a man, because I'm a good person, and finished Temple of Icog. I killed a bird for an ogre, and then took a quick workout break at Giant's Foundry for a few smithing levels to smelt the perfect gold ore for Family Crest. Foundry isn't great XP, nor is it incredibly efficient, but when you're as poor as I am at this point in the run, you can get it done pretty quick for pretty cheap with plate bodies from Horvik and Barok. After I hit 40 smithing, I teleported to Soul Wars and ran into the Edgeville dungeon to realize why Frame still comes down here. And then this old man gave me some terrible gloves, which I immediately traded for better ones, then made a pit stop at the gnome house for some energy potions, got 63 farming on my first beautiful teak trees, then I got 64 hunter, 37 herb lore after a Herolander run, and then minigame teleported back to Giant's Foundry. Now, editing Gwen isn't really sure why speedrunning Gwen did this. It's not in the plan until much later, though it is with the same method. I think I was just tired of questing. My spacebar holding hand hurts. Once we got back from our round trip of Gilinor, we completed one small favor for a nice chunk of Herblore XP, and then ran into the jungle to fight a demon that's much higher level than me. I don't know if you guys know this, you know, like, keep it on the DL, but basically all you need for Legends quest is 43 prayer. I'm only like 1300 total right now, it's not even that hard to do, and they're just gonna hand me 130,000 Herblore XP, like, look at that! I mean, I love it, but it's insane. <laughs> With my humanitarian deeds done, I unalived a man in cold blood to complete regicide, and then booted up the old PvP arena group finder to start working towards some zero time imbue scrolls. Now when most people do the PvP arena for scrolls, they just AFK and die on purpose because it's faster than trying, and while the in-game time spent on the PvP arena world doesn't transfer to your main profile, that still didn't feel very moral to me. That's not to say I didn't die almost every time, but I never claimed I was good at PvP. I tried. <laughs> if you're curious about the PvP arena, because there's like zero reason you'd know about it unless someone told you at this point, you can queue for random 1v1 matches while you do other stuff in game and it gives you a little pop-up. Like this one. When there's a fight ready for you. Most of my PvP arenaing was done while doing all of the RFD subquests, or the brief moment when I was in Hesidia's kitchen to finish 70 cooking off. Um, but by the time I was done with Awawogi, we already had the points I needed for an MP scroll. I only did one at this point, but I'll be needing a second one at some point later, but again, it doesn't count for in-game time, so it's not really a big deal. With our new powerful rune gloves in hand, we took the next logical step, did a birdhouse run, finally set up for giant seaweed, collected some mushrooms for super energy potions, and took my cat on a desert vacation for a Clarin's little helper. A lot going on in this one. <laughs> By this point I was running pretty low on birdhouse seeds and herbs I needed, so I took a little moment in Hesidius to steal from an honest man for my own profit while plotting my next steps. 
the goal for the end of the episode is to finish Guardians of the Rift, which means the full outfit for ZMI later and the Abyssal Needle for the huge Mungus pouch. Before we can get to that though, all this questing has brought me down to basically zero things I can zero time. I used all my logs, my runes, my molten glass, my arrowheads, all of it. So I ran to Draenor and clicked a knife, then a log, then a tree, over and over and over until 60 wood cutting to build up a supply of willow logs that I can fletch during Guardians of the Rift. And I didn't record it, but I went to Port Kazar to buy enough sand and soda ash to get to 61 crafting for Lunar Diplomacy, and I got 55 and 56 crafting, turning it into molten glass to do between the Guardians of the Rift games. After a couple of games, and with what we had from last time of course, we had enough for an outfit piece, so I bought the top. It's pretty cute. I got a fletching level, and then a rune crafting level, and then a crafting level, and then I got 58 herb lore while on a birdhouse run, so I finally used my tithe points to buy the herb sack and you guessed it, went back to guard some more rifts. I don't like to keep too many points, because I like to know exactly how many pearls I have, and on our first batch of pulls we managed to get an abyssal needle, which means all we need now is more abyssal pearls. However again, by now I'd run out of stuff that I could do between games, so I took my shiny new 60 woodcutting to the woodcutting guild for the invisible plus 7 boost, and clicked knives and logs again until I got 61 woodcutting. While doing a birdhouse run, I realized I should get some more volcanic ash, so I took the time to stock up, and then had the saddest seaweed run of my life. With 75 rune crafting, I left to do some runs and managed to pick up enough giant seaweed to hit our first goal of 75 crafting, and then went back to Guardians of Rift for the final time. I've done this grind on two different accounts in the last few months, and I've gotta say, it, it really is good content. It's so easy to just kind of like switch your brain off, and it's super powerful for early irons especially. Usually people wouldn't do the outfit until about 80 plus rune crafting, but the way my math works out takes zero input for a huge output of XP and GP that will be massively helpful for this run moving forward. As far as luck goes, mine was pretty average on this run. I did get two lanterns and a die, which helped boost the pearl stack quite a bit, but I also had a long string of pulls with almost no pearls in them, so that kind of balances out, I guess. Having the needle and the outfit before we unlock Dale is going to be so nice in a couple hundred hours. Oh, and I got a shield left half on my last pouch too, so I did kind of get spooned on that. After those last few pulls, I traded in my lantern for the last pearls that I needed and bought the final piece of the recrafting outfit. And, I'm sorry to say, that's going to be the end of this episode. I'll put some stat comparisons on the screen for you so you can see where I was last episode as compared to where I am now, and I'll also have my bank scrolling up so you can take a look at how poor I am. I tried some new stuff with the editing this episode, now that I have less of a deluge of clips, you know, all the early game stuff. It's a lot of stuff to record. Um, but if you like it, if you hate it, if you just think it's okay, maybe leave a comment to let me know, I'd really appreciate it. And subscribe if you're not, that'd be pretty cool of you. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.